it is hot and humid out today so uh, uh, I think it's gonna be hot and humid all week long so I am wearing today a dress and this dress is a Madewell dress, dress, but I got it from Poshmark. I really like it because it has kind of like the um, embroidered top up here. Um, and then it just has like these very thin stripes and then buttons that go all the way down. Um, and then it has kind of that same and little embroidery down at the bottom, which I really like. So I think it's a nice little um, cute fit dress itself and I am one of those teachers that I don't like to wear anything that's above my knees because I just I just don't like to wear them <laughs> um, so this is nice because it kind of goes below my knee um, and I think it's just a really nice cut uh, the cut itself so I also have a little cherry cardigan and this little cherry cardigan was from um, forever 21 um, it's nice it just is kind of one of those like Heather Gray looking type sweaters. Um, it is a little bit too hot for this sweater, but it, because this is a spaghetti strap, I'm not, I can't really wear it without anything else. So, sweater it is. Um, I still have the same jewelry on from last week. This one's from Stella and Dot, which is like the infinity um, necklace. I have my normal rings on, my Burberry watch on, no earrings because they annoy me. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so same, same jewelry. I have one of my mom's rings on my other finger. I don't know if you guys can see that. Like, that's my mom's ring. And that's really about it. So this right here is from... What is this from? This right here is from Kate Spade. And it is just where I hold my badge. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the outfit for today. Oh, shoes! And my shoes are my nude Tory Burch flats. I desperately need it to get cooler into this room. I don't know if they're like not wanting to put the AC on a little bit earlier in the morning. I would love it if they did <sighs> because I'm already sweating and it's not even like 7.30 yet. Um, so this morning I have a few things that I'm trying to get done. I got, I had a really, really nice three day weekend. Although I was super crabby this weekend and then um, like I can tell allergy season is starting and it always happens around the time the fair is going to start happening. The fair starts on Friday, which is very exciting because Fluffy gets here on Saturday. I got recognized by one of these guys who comes up to me, right? He just walks up and he's staring. He's like, <laughs> and I know the look. He's looking at me like I look at tacos. Just, <laughs> just you know. I can't even wait for it. Um, but yeah, I start to get like really... I don't know, like my nose is kind of icky gross and my head is just So I'm already feeling the side effects of like falls trying to like break through the summer time um, So I have a few things this morning that I would like to do I'm attempting to try to put up some whiteboard up there on my uh, Cabinet door for our morning messages in the morning so that we're not putting it up here on this big board because I tend to typically need that board uh, And then I am starting math groups this week, which is kind of exciting and kind of nerve-wracking at the same time But luckily because we changed our schedule from last year that doesn't happen until after lunch So I have a little bit more time to kind of prepare. I only have two groups um, We started with this few groups as possible so that if we have to break apart then we can break apart from there so I only have two I can go up to having three groups um, and then maybe even like three groups for each of us and then we have somebody who pushes in during that time who takes two groups so I feel like that's a good amount right there it's a good amount um, so I have to get some IXL lists for them together because that is what they're going to be starting on today. And I will go over a little bit more in detail about like how I go through my, how we have like our math workshop time. Um, this morning for reading, we're going to be working on predicting. So I need to find my text for my prediction for my lesson plans. And we're working on responsibility for our morning message, um, for our morning meetings all this week. I wasn't able to really come up with like really cute artsy creative stuff for responsibility but I did come up with some really good lessons that it's that I think is going to um, demonstrate to the kids about how important responsibility is and not just not just in school but also at home to the environment to you know 
society like there are so many things that we need to be responsible for and there are so many stakeholders um, that if we are not responsible then we're affecting other people and I don't think kids understand that all the way so we're gonna talk about that this week um, I'm gonna get my morning message together probably drink some water because it's really hot for coffee right now <laughs> <laughs> How often do y'all hear me say that? You know it's hot when I say I need water. <laughs> um, so I'm going to get those things together and then I'll catch up with you guys. So I have the whiteboard up. I think what I'm going to do is frame it with some black uh, border so that it doesn't show how imperfect it is. But at least it's a spot for my kids to be able to do their responses here. Um, we can keep it up all day long so we can talk about it in the afternoons, which is what the issue was with having it here. I would end up having to erase it um, and then we couldn't talk about it again in the afternoons. So I think this is a really nice spot for me to be able to kind of refer back to it when we have our closing circle. Uh, and then I also decided to bring out, I'm about to sneeze, excuse me. Um, and then I also decided to bring out my Jenga set, my giant Jenga set that my husband made for me a couple of years ago. Um, I love it and I think I'm going to end up using it in the classroom. We use it quite a bit when we work on um, any type of math skills, when the kids like to review anything. Um, it's a great way for them to have like activities. Uh, but there's also like a behavior piece that you can do with it and if you want to like say so many times like, I don't know, like every time something happens I'm going to end up, you know putting it there. I don't know yet. I haven't really quite decided yet, but I thought it was a really cool idea. Plus it just looks awesome. So I put my giant Jenga set there, which I think looks cool. And that's really about it. I need to get my morning message up now. Also to note, I just had like my administration just came in my room and I have like my sweater off because it's so blooming hot. And I'm like, um, I have a sweater. I'm really sorry. He, they just laughed at me because they weren't really in here for me. They were looking at my room. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my morning message up. I'm feeling icky, 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 icky. I honestly feel like I just walked in this morning and I have gotten so little done. Is that just like a Monday thing? I'm gonna say it's not even really Monday. Technically, it's Tuesday. Gosh, that's a fail. All right, um, I am actually having my vertical team. It's like my Mac team is my vertical team, but today's vertical team planning day for our collab at eight o'clock. So I am sitting down with my um, two team teachers and we are kind of planning through, I guess this week and the next week if we have it, um, really getting together some math sense stuff since we're launching our math workshop this afternoon. <sighs> I feel so congested. All right. So we're going to have morning meeting this morning and then we're going to have our uh, reading workshop on predictions using our little booklet that we've had uh, and then we're going to go to lunch. So it's a pretty easy morning and then I will hopefully get to talk to you guys during my lunch break. Do I look really bad? Because I think I feel really bad. <laughs> um, it's the end of the day. I had a really quick meeting uh, for the... We had a... It's the end of the day and we had a quick like faculty meeting um, and I feel like poop. I took my medicine this morning like I was supposed to and the it just has gotten worse. My allergies are just straight up acting crazy. Craziness y'all. It's crazy. So while I would totally love to sit here I am just going to gather my things because I also have uh, Blaine's like back to school, meet the teacher night tonight, and I really do want to meet his teacher. Um, my husband gets to meet the teachers, like he gets to see them all the time, and I told him, I was like, I really want to go to this because it allows me to see my kids' teachers. I feel super rambly. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, I'm getting my things together. Math went okay. It wasn't the best of the best of how I wanted it to plan out. We got really behind doing a pre-assessment for writing today, um, and... Uh, so that ended up happening. I'm feeling super hot. <laughs> we got really behind with writing and ended up getting into math a little bit later. We had to get them sorted into their math groups and then I have only two math groups at the moment. So I'm gonna take some of my folders and then maybe if I'm at home and I have a chance, I might talk to you guys about what I put in their folders and how I'm kind of organizing my math groups this year. Um, maybe that will help give you guys an idea of like what I'm doing for math workshop. I feel like this is gonna be a really good week for me to talk about math workshop and how I'm setting it up for myself, um, my reasons behind it, and yeah, so I think that'll be a good idea, but I feel nauseous. So I think what I'm gonna do is just get all my things and then I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna get in bed. 
by the way, my husband was able to paint our bedroom wall, which I am so excited to show you guys. So I'm gonna head home, I'm gonna show you the wall, and then I'm gonna get cozy. Well, after I meet the teacher. After I meet the teacher, I'll get cozy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, same jewelry as always. I have my Burberry watch, my Stella and Dot infinity necklace, and then I have my Kate Spade um, ID badge that I wear. So that's really about it. I don't wear any earrings, of course, as always. <laughs> no earrings. Um, but that is my outfit for today. Kind of comfy, a little bit casual, um, but still, I feel like it's still pretty businesslike. This is very me. So. I don't know. So I went to Walmart this morning because I just needed to go to Walmart. We have back to school night tonight, so the parents are gonna be coming by. We always usually set up some sort of a table for them. Uh, cookies and drinks, um, like the information, like pamphlet that we typically, typically will give them. Um, so, whew, I sweat up. So I needed to go and pick up some things. I got bottles of water, and then I got all of the stuff that I needed for my drink that I mix every single time that they come um so it has pineapple it has uh, lemonade in it and then it has sprite i have plenty of lemonade left over so i just needed to pick up one pineapple juice and then i needed to get two of the sprite bottles and then i picked up some other stuff so funny little story we have a, a bin this bin to be precise in this bin i guess it's not really a funny story it's actually sad but in this bin is where my students put their lunch boxes in the morning and they take them down into the cafeteria um where they have like these shelves and they put their like bins in those shelves the kids will put them back in when they're done going to lunch because they always go to recess afterwards so that they're not carrying them around and losing them and leaving them all over the place and then a kid is responsible for bringing the lunch bin back well i was never anticipating this is the third year now never anticipating having so many children who bring their lunch uh, so my bin has been overflowing to the point where there are usually about three or four maybe five lunch boxes that just don't fit in it and now they've been getting lost every stinking day y'all somebody comes up to me at the end of the day i can't find my lunch box well because it somehow got put in somebody else's lunch box and somebody else took it so i had to go and get a new bin the new and approved bin i think the kids will be very excited about that not even lying i also picked up some paper i'm going to print out our information sheet so like typically People will do like a folder or something to that extent where it has like a lot of information. You have like an about me information page. Um, you have uh, like we usually put like dojos in there. We put all kinds of stuff. However, because we gave that to them during Move the Pride at the end of the year last year, we sent all the kids home with one. We felt like it would be a huge waste to do that. And there's really no time at all to be able to get all that in so here's what we've done instead instead I'm not gonna do a close-up because it has information on it we do a top 10 information page for the MAC team and what this does is it has the top 10 pieces of information that we want to make sure that they're leaving here with today so for instance snacks making sure iPads are charged um, and that parents can take iPads away if they need to take iPads away at the end of, you know, at, at in the evening. Like it is technology and a lot of families don't want their kids on technology all day long. I don't blame them. I would take my kid's iPad away. So we're telling them to take it away if they feel the need that they need to take it away. Um, Dojo and how we're communicating through Dojo. Um, we're also putting in there about their daily folder that goes home with them every single day. Our schedules in there. Um, we're telling them about Skyward and how we're not communicating through Dojo because parents would send messages through Dojo. It's really easy to send messages through Dojo. It's like text, but we can't communicate through Dojo. So we're telling parents that we have to communicate through email or Skyward. 
um we have like our uh, instagram and our twitter page so that they are like our id so that they can follow us on twitter and instagram where we'll put up some information there we tell them about homework we tell them about water bottles because they are sometimes really nice for the kids to have although the clinking ones drive me bunkers and then finally that we're hosting some mac nights uh periodically and i think the first one is going to be in october which is going to be an, a tech night um it's really nice to have these type of nights because it doesn't bog down our conferences <laughs> which we'd sit there explaining how we run things in conferences versus talking about our kids so um it's our top 10 page this is the only thing that we're going to be sending home um because if they come to the presentation they'll grab this page we'll give them pretty much all of the gist of everything as far as like field trips which we're not really telling our field trip because we want it to be a secret for the kids um and we'll just give them little bits of information that's on here but a little bit more in depth during our presentation so i need to copy this onto that green paper i also picked up glass cleaner did you know you could clean whiteboards with glass cleaner my maintenance people told me that i was like oh that's pretty cool so i got glass cleaner because it's way cheaper than buying the actual board cleaner stuff this is the pineapple juice that i use for my drink mixture in case you're just wondering and then i picked up two of these one two i also while i was in there picked up some more cheerios because <laughs> i'm running out of my cereal and i didn't bring lunch today so typically when i don't bring a lunch this is what i eat in case you're wondering and then i got extra coffee because I need coffee. We are having an intruder drill this morning. We practiced our intruder drills yesterday, but we have to have something to cover our windows. Um, and a lot of people have used like those pa butcher paper where they roll up and they pin it at the top and they'll just like let go of the butcher paper. Well, I had another curtain, the same curtain that's on the front side of my door, on the back side of my door and the inside. Uh, but that stinking thing kept falling down. So I think I'm gonna do like command hooks and I'm going to place this on the hook so it doesn't keep falling down. And that way, when we do have an intruder drill, I can just take off the little piece and close my blind so that nobody can peek into the window. Um, so this is what I'm going to do first thing this morning because I need to have this done first thing this morning. <laughs> All right, so now the door is covered. So whenever I have an intruder drill or if there is an intruder, I can just pull this all the way down. It easily comes off and then it conceals the door, which is what we needed to have happen. Um, this one is so like dense that you can't really even see through it. So I'm not even gonna bother with that unless my principal tells me that I need to change it. So um, that is it. That's kind of the way my door is gonna end up going now. I've had this since my first year here. It still has the little Harry Potter <laughs> on it. I'm keeping it. New basket. Somebody left their lunchbox. So our morning meeting isn't going to be quite the same as last week's. Um, I'm kind of improvising it just because of our intruder drills. Yesterday we had to practice it. Today is going to be the actual drill itself. Um, so we're going to still continue with responsibility. However, I'm going to do an anchor chart with four different areas. It's going to have um, how... I am responsible at home, how I'm responsible with myself, how I'm responsible at school, and then how I'm responsible with my environment slash community. Uh, and then the kids are gonna just brainstorm out some ideas. Tomorrow we'll start to talk a little bit more about like the stakeholders piece of it. So we're gonna brainstorm that piece today for morning meeting, and then we'll have our intruder drill. For reading today, we're switching some things up uh, because, <laughs> all for good reasons um because on friday we really want to do a murder mystery um we think those are really great for inferences and so we're going to incorporate that into our inference lesson um so we're just going to skip inferences inside of our spy camp book um so we're going to go into visualizing and for the visualizing piece, what we decided to do, is, so here's what visualizing is. We have like the uh, five different areas that we can be able to describe something that we're visualizing in our head using our senses. So we're using words on one side. And then on the opposite side, we're using pictures. So we're actually drawing what it is that we're seeing in our minds. For this, we're using poetry because it is so fitting. And one, because my book didn't come in in time, uh, just because we did end up switching everything around. I had the book, The Storm, which is such a cool book. Um, and it didn't come in so we're gonna use the book honey I love I actually used this when I did a second grade lesson uh, back when I was in school that was a cool lesson it was like a whole group lesson that I did I was observed it was really cool 
So we're gonna do Honey, I Love. I'm gonna read this to them and I'm gonna show them and model for them how I go about writing down all the senses that I'm kind of feeling and the things that I'm smelling in my head. Sorry, somebody ended up coming in my room. Um, so like I said, we're gonna have the kind of the visualized piece here where they're gonna get to write it down in words, being able to explain using their five senses. And on the opposite side, they're gonna have where they're going to actually draw out their pictures. It kind of goes through, it has a really like descriptive descriptive text. Um, my favorite part is the hot, the day is hot and icky and sun sticks to my skin. Mr. Davis turns the hose on. Everybody jumps right in. The water stings my stomach and I feel so nice and cool. Honey, let me tell you that I love a flying pool. I love to feel a flying pool. And Renee comes out to play and brings her dolls without a dress. I make a dress with paper. And so it just kind of goes through. We're going to model it for the kids this morning. So I have my two anchor charts that I've made up there. Um, it pretty much, it is an exact replica of what I have here on these papers. So I'm going to read it to them. I'm going to model for them how I go about it. Um, and then we have some poems that I am pulling and putting onto Schoology from where the sidewalk ends. Um, I have five different ones that the kids are going to get to select from. So they're going to pick one and then they are going to read it and then practice it, putting it into their own booklets here. Um, I thought it was just kind of a different, something different, something to change it up and then also introduce poetry to our learners so I have five of them here that I'm gonna end up putting in <clears throat> and that's pretty much it for this morning um, we'll go into writing and math and today we are starting Saturdays and tea cakes which is one that I did last year with a few group of students um, but I don't I think because of the snow and Jabez Town, we were never able to actually finish it. So we're gonna go back through, we're gonna do it as a big, huge group, and it's gonna be the kickoff to our writing workshop and how we're gonna take them through the entire process. So that's also gonna start today, which is all very exciting. It's a lot of things going on, but I feel semi-okay other than the cold. Um, I am gonna go ahead and get my things together because I have probably about five or ten minutes before the kids start running in. I need to get my morning message up and then I'm gonna start placing these into Schoology for this morning's lesson. Um, and uh, yeah, so this Friday, I told you guys that we ended up changing around some of the lessons for reading. Um, and we're skipping inferences, which is what should have been here today. And we're gonna do inferences on Friday because we are gonna do a lesson. It's like a murder mystery. Um, that one of my partners had a book from last year and I don't have the book with me unfortunately she has it but it's gonna be end up being like a, just a murder mystery mystery there's gonna be stations and what will be nice is if we have to go over into writing time we'll have that flexibility to do that we also have to figure out and schedule SRIs I'm really just saying that because I have to remind myself to talk about when we're gonna schedule our SRIs um, one day during the Mac hour this week we were supposed to start passion projects and that did not happen because we got behind on technology because the technology wasn't working. It's fixed now. Um, and uh, yeah, so I need to get all those things together. I'm really excited because I am going to get Chipotle for dinner tonight. Okay, so really quick, I really, really like this quote that I have down here. Um, it, it says, it is not only for what we do that we are held responsible, but also what we do not, but also for what we do not do. Isn't that an awesome quote? Oh, I love it. It's all about responsibility, going with our theme this week. Love it. By the way, my message is not very good. Don't judge me. It's been a very busy day today. Uh, it's now the end of the day, and my partners and I are gonna head out. We're gonna go to the grocery store to pick up a couple of things for our back to school night tonight. And then I am also need to pick up like ice and we're gonna get some dinner. So we're gonna head out before it gets incredibly crazy and then get back to school ASAP. Listen. So after having a really late night last night with our back to school night with us meeting parents, I didn't get home until probably 9 o'clock and I just went straight downhill after that because I think I forgot to take my medicine. I did forget to take my medicine um, towards the end of the evening so I started feeling really, really crummy. By the time I got home, my head was hurting. I was super congested. You can kind of hear it in my voice today that I just don't sound the best of the best. Um, so I went a little bit more casual um, than I feel like I probably should be going but I feel like it's okay I'm really tired I'm like achy so 
I still look all right, I think. <laughs> um, I did my hair up in my little half like bun style. My husband wanted to kind of me to point out that it's not that he doesn't like my hair this way, it's the fact that it's not his favorite out of all of my hairstyles. So he still thinks I'm beautiful. <laughs> um, however, he just said that this is not his favorite hairstyle out of all of them. Which is fine. I don't need him to love every single hairstyle that I have. Um, then I have this oops then I have this t-shirt it's like a striped short sleeve t-shirt which is really nice it's nice and cozy I like the um the little border edge around my shirt but this one's from H&M it's just a super cheap it kind of comes higher up on the waist and comes lower in the front and the back um I have my Target chambre is this how you say it? Like, is it a chambray, chambray, chambray shirt? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I have my Target shirt that I really like to wear. I think it's just super cozy and I like the length of it. I think it covers my bum nicely, which is what I want. Um, then I have these black pants, which are from Ann Taylor Loft. Um, they're super cozy. They're extremely high waist, so I feel like they like suck it all in, which is kind of nice. Um, and then my feet are incredibly swollen, so I'm wearing my furks my fake burks and that's really about it um like I said we got in really really got done really late last night I have to just also point out really fast today is the first day that I'm walking in my classroom and it feels so nice in here <laughs> we all had got new dehumidifiers in our rooms because it's been so humid outside um our classrooms have been like rather damp um, so they got us all new dehumidifiers and it is like the best thing on the face of this planet. <laughs> I walk in and it just feels so flipping great. So this has been a little bit of a rough week for me just because of not feeling well and then there's, I felt like there was a lot kind of going on. And it was a four day week, holy moly, how in the world can all of that happen? So I apologize for the last two days of just awful probably footage. I haven't even gone back and looked at it to be honest. I'm dreading going back and looking at it because I know it's probably not the best of the best. But um, either way, it's been a really crazy busy kind of week and I feel like my whole back area is a bit of a hot mess which I'm gonna focus on and getting cleaned up. I did want to talk to you a little bit because I keep telling you guys I'm gonna tell you about my math workshop and I haven't gotten around to it. Um, so I do want to talk you through my math workshop and how we're kind of formatting our math workshop. So what's nice about our schedule and I'm gonna put my schedule right here. Um, what's nice about the schedule is that we have content integrated. So uh, for us, our reading block, our writing block, our science, like all of our science and social studies is all integrated into our reading and writing. And maybe even math sometimes, but not so much with math. Um, we get it, we pull it in every once in a while, but it's not like it takes over our math block if that makes sense. Um, there may be a couple of days where we could do that, but it's not like our huge focus. So what's nice about our schedule is that we have kind of our morning time for reading um, early in the morning, first thing before we even go to lunch. Like I said, we have a brunch. It's at 1040. Holy moly. It is what it is. Um, I think I'm about to sneeze. Nope. All right. So after that, we come back and we'll have our writing time. So we spend about a good um, 40 to 50 minutes with our writing. Like I said, that's integrated with our science and social studies. And then we go into math. Now the beauty with our schedule is that we have something called the Mac Hour, which is kind of a spinoff of a Genius Hour slash we want it to be part of Passion Project slash we want it to also be a part of like flexible grouping. Um, so we want to have that flexibility to be able to say, you know what, we need to pull more time for PBL or you know what, we need to pull more time for math or we need to pull in another writing lesson or another reading lesson. That's what that Mac Hour is for. It's that flexibility for us as teachers to be able to kind of put things in where we need to put them in but also give our kids opportunities to build on some of their passions and work work on things that they either need or that they're really motivated about so what I love about it is that if we end up needing to pull time from for math we can pull time for math so I know it says that we only have an hour for math but you also have to remember there are four of us that are teaching math groups at the same 
all at the same time. Um, so it's three of us for the Mac team teachers. So myself, Jamie, and then Kim. And then we also have a teacher that pushes in, a special ed teacher who push, pushes in and she takes groups as well. So she's with us that entire time, which is really, really nice. Um, so we are kind of estimating that we're gonna have about three groups each. Um, and right now we started off with two groups. Uh, I think one of the groups had to get split yesterday So now I'm up to my three groups, which is my max at this point If I end up having to take another group again, we're gonna have to just pull from the Mac hour, which isn't that big of a deal um, but we have three different groups so we tell our kids that we have kind of rotations if you remember last year we talked a lot about our rotation schedules and we had like 10 different rotations and the kids were all working on things some of you were like how in the world did you come up with that it's blowing my mind it blew our minds too but it's not as difficult as what you would think um it is as creating for schedules it's really not that hard um, but we ended up going back to having kind of our blocks of time um, and doing kind of rotations within it So it's really like your typical math workshop to be honest um, But the only difference is, is that we don't do all the fluff that's kind of inside of a normal math workshop And by the fluff I mean like all of the dope rotation centers Because I'm gonna be very honest when it comes to my fourth fifth and sixth graders and once they transition to the school They're like intermediate mode. They are so over it. They don't want to do centers and in my opinion I want it to be authentic. I want it to be engaging and sometimes I feel like centers is just busy work <laughs> They're glorified worksheets, and it's just busy work for them and there's no accountability There's no double checking they could be practicing something completely wrong, and you just don't even know it so what we decided to do is focus on three different areas um, the first is going to be small groups so that's going to be 20 minutes that they have with one of us as their teachers the second one is going to be ixl so we are very very lucky in our district that we are one-to-one -one and our kids have the opportunity to be on ixl which is something my district pays for um, what i like about ixl is that i can truly customize it to fit my students needs so if i have kids who need the time to work on multiplication a little bit more i might give them some time to practice and do that multiplication with IXL and what's great about IXL and this is not an ad for IXL by the way <laughs> but um, what's great about IXL is that if they're getting it incorrect it teaches them the correct way of doing it so that they know they're practicing and they're trying to get it right so they're, they're not just sitting there practicing it the wrong way getting it the wrong answers and they don't really care they're just going through the motions well they care here because they have to get so much of a percentage at the end of the day and it kind of tracks their scores and their percentages for me and I can go on and look at what they're getting so I can customize it to fit their needs um, along with IXL we have them go on and do reflex now sometimes for uh, certain kids I might end up not having them do reflex and just do regular old-fashioned cards because let me be honest like I like reflex I like the game part of it and the kids really like the game part of it but I just don't think that they're as fluent as what reflex says they are so I try to use cards for them so that they can really truly pack, practice some of that fluency during that time then on top of like their that technology piece and then the small groups we have an independent practice piece and this is where I can truly make it fit my kids needs and then we can I almost use that scaffolding piece so if we think about scaffolding um, they're doing it with me first I'm modeling it for me for them they're practicing it in front of me and then I'm gonna give them some sort of practice to be able to either do as a group to do in partners or to do independently and so that is what they'll do during that independent math time and that always follows their math group so you would have either small group then you would have their <laughs> so you would essentially their rotation would be like if they had small group with me first they would have independent math next and then they would have IXL if their group was not first with me they might start off with IXL, then they would have a small group with me, and then last, they would have their, their independent practice. Now you're probably wondering, what about those kids who have group last? Well, I purposely pick out kids to have a last group, because what will end up happening is that they will start the day working on the activity from yesterday. So they'll have independent math first from yesterday's math group, they will do IXL, and then they will have math group with me. That math 
group with me will determine what they have for their independent practice tomorrow. And usually I touch base with them for about one to two minutes to get them going. They practice it together or partners or groups depending on what or independently depending on what I want. Um, and then they get started on their math. But this is something that I give them. Y'all, it could be anything. It could be a flipping game. Like this is where kind of like I pull in maybe some of those like math center -y ideas. Um, but it's like fun and it's engaging it's harder it's something that they're working together sometimes and it's not just them trying to go through the rotation <laughs> um so i give them their like practice they'll do it like i have them playing jenga sometimes i have them doing all kinds of different activities just to get them practicing but also get them collaborating and discussing things together sometimes i give them really challenging things like i will have like um gosh what do i call them they're like riddle almost like riddle math problems where they have to like try to figure it out and they do they love those because they're so hard and the kids think that they're just so much so much fun and it's so fun and engaging so I kind of pulled those pieces in but that's really about it we don't go above and beyond to make this something like super cute super fancy it is seriously that it's just practice and it's engaging they're working with partners they're working with groups and I think that's what makes math so fun is that the fact that they are able to have some of those conversations they're able to have some of those games that makes it a little bit more than just sitting down and doing a worksheet um, so that's pretty much all I do for math like that's my math workshop I I did want to show you however how I go about tracking and keeping my materials for our math groups. So this year we uh, purchased new folders for our kids. Uh, folders that we wanted to have as just like one daily folder. Last year we had a black folder that was like their home folder and then they had like another folder that they kept here to like contain all their things and it was too many folders for them. Like they were freaking out. They just couldn't handle it um so we have one folder and these are the folders that we ended up purchasing and i don't i think it was from amazon they're smeed and if you're very curious they're smeed number eight seven seven two one um they're very nice so we ended up going for the gray option and what's great about these is that they have a pocket on one side they have this like double pocket here in the middle and they have one in the back um so this serves as their take-home folder and then also like a folder that they use for the entire day why i'm talking about these folders and why we use them is because i decided to take six of them for me myself <laughs> Um, so I use and we all actually use a folder of some sort um, and it's pretty much a, the same type of folder but not the same type of folder it has multiple pockets if that helps um, and all three of us use these types of folders to be able to organize our groups so I had these little pockets these little plastic can you guys see that like this little plastic pocket um that's a stick on from target that i purchased a while back i bought a bunch of them because they were in stock um and this is what i use to be able to put a sticky note so a sticky note inside of it tells me what group it is and then it has a list of all the kids that i have in that group so i keep the materials um that they are turning into me into this folder and this is how i track my students progress so right now i had um i have an ixl list that looks something like this it has like all of the IXL levels that if you're working on this unit, then this is some of the IXLs that I want you practicing. Um, I have the flexibility to go in and add more if I need to add more for them. Like I said, if they need to practice other skills um, that I don't feel that they're as strong in, they can do that on this sheet. Um, then I also have kind of my notes here to be able to kind of pull out and use for my kids. Um, and then as they're going along, we have uh, these sheets that we're in the still in the process of kind of creating. Um, but they have uh, basically the standards that we're trying to hit with them, the I can statements that we're hitting with them, so that as they're turning things in and we're grading them and we're marking them, we're gonna keep all of those here. At the end of the unit, what we are going to do is then we're gonna take everything, staple it all together um, that's out of this folder, that's graded work, things that they've worked on like their um what are those called quick checks that they've worked on they are going to staple it onto that kind of main sheet that tells them their progress and how they've done in that unit we're going to send it home parents are going to sign it they're going to keep the work because we don't want the work <laughs> and then they're going to send us that paper back 
so that we can place it inside of their like folder that we keep as far as like showing their progression so that's kind of the idea behind all of it um, this is how we end up just kind of tracking everything so we can take anecdotal notes in this but really I've been using this and my iPad to kind of help me plan um, but that's all that that's how we end up doing it so here's like my multiplication group um, and they have again another IXL list and then they had some different items that we were using as practice here in small group um, and that's really about it to be honest um, it's nothing super fancy I think we do it pretty easy and it's pretty low-key the kids like it because it's just kind of that routine it's that easy practice like coming in and getting it done it's nothing so overboard that we feel like we have to like clean up a ton of stuff or um, it takes us a ton of time just to kind of get into the motions of it it's like sit down get to work let's go <laughs> that's really about it so that's kind of it I felt like I, I hope that helps you guys a little bit kind of understand how we set up our math block um, once we start getting into the motions of like reading and writing I will go through and talk about my reading and my writing block and how we're setting that up but we're just not there yet because we're setting some of those ground like expectations and talking about the overall skills that we want all of our learners to understand uh, so it's more whole group at the moment and then once we get past it we'll start doing a lot more small groups so we'll talk to you guys about that later um, I purchased a book I purchased a book and I felt like I wanted to open it with you guys because I was super excited actually I'm really sad super excited about the book super sad about the timing um, because I got the book thinking I was gonna use it today got it um, I got this book they really packed this sucker So I got this book thinking that I was going to use it today and we ended up changing our plans around so I wasn't able to actually use this book um, for visualizing but if you are wanting to find a book for visualizing because you haven't gotten there yet um, and you have my little packet thank you so much for purchasing that you guys like are so supportive and so wonderful and I'm beyond grateful for all of you um, but if you have my little packet and you're like hmm what am I gonna do for visualizing you could do the poems that we did yesterday um, or you can find this book this book is so flipping good. So this is the Storm book, and it's written by Charlotte Zolato. Zolato. Mm. Um, I just want to find one part. L this is the first, pa the first page. Just listen to it. It is a day in the country, and everything is hot. The grass looks dry and parched. The buttercups are sticky with dust. The daisies' white petals look gray, and all the flowers. The rambler roses climbing up the gate, the hollyhocks leaning against the house, hang limply on their stems. The little boy can almost see the heat quivering up like mist from the earth. A little caterpillar climbs carefully from a dusty blade of grass and then climbs down again. There is a special hot stillness over everything. The white fox terrier has crawled under the lattice work of the porch and lies sleeping, sleeping in the shade. Even the birds seem too hot to sing, for there is not a sound among the leaves. Y'all, like, isn't that wonderful for visualizing? Look at that. Ugh. I just, I'm like a little heartbroken that I can't use this, but when I get to visualizing, guess what book I'm using when I do it in a small group? <laughs> Very excited. Um, so I'm excited to be able to use that book. I if you guys have got to go and check this out I'll leave a link to my Amazon store where I have like a lot of the books that I am just like beyond passionate about um, I'm in the process of trying to work on telling you what books are gonna be good for which skills in my Amazon store so make sure you go and look at it but really 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 good book for visualizing super good book okay I'm gonna spend some time trying to get my things cleaned up because as a hot mess in here it's a hot mess um, they go. Thankfully, it's not hot. <laughs> it's just the mess. 
So I wanted to show you guys really fast um, how I am doing my anchor charts in my small groups. So I have a Good Notes notebook. Um, let me just kind of see if I can show it to you. So I have categories and then I have one for anchor charts. When I go into anchor charts, I have two for right now. Um, I have a place value and then a multiplication and a division one. So for the place value, the first thing I did was I talked about um, just the different values that we are going to be looking at. So we have ones or the periods. I apologize. I can't think straight y'all the the ones the thousands millions and the billions and then we talked about different forms so then we had um, they have some pages where they're taking some notes and these are the pages that they kind of look like this is what they look like so to kind of make this uh, replicate mine the kids used the highlighter toolkit so here is what my small group area ends up looking like, minus all that stuff right there, for my math groups. And I have just kind of a piece of felt for them to be able to wipe off, but then I have my highlighter toolkit, which is available in my store if you would like to use it, just kind of having as um, some different ways that you can be able to use highlighters in your lessons. And they used it to be able to show the different periods. <clears throat> So you can see here that, that we used blue for the ones, the pink for the thousands period, and then the green for the millions. When we got down here, we also used a highlighter to be able to show the difference between the whole number and the decimal. And then on the next page, you'll see here where we started looking at, again, more periods. So wherever there was kind of a comma, you're going to see the comma just a little bit right there. We marked off the different periods so that the kids could kind of see the connection between what I did in the beginning. And then I just simply marked off what they were supposed to do for their homework. So they were meant to finish this up and then uh, turn it into my basket. So they have to have that in by this morning. Um, and then tomorrow or today, actually, we're going to continue working on some of these notes here. So this is kind of how I ended up doing it. Then I have my multiplication one. We talked about multiplying with um, multiples of 10 and ends up talking about what ends up happening, um, which is this is so nice because when I projected here onto my TV, Another little piece pops up on the screen. Um, let me see if I can get it so you can guys can see it. So if you guys can kind of see, here is what my screen ends up looking like for the kids. So this is so nice for me to be able to do my anchor charts from here. And then I just use my iPad to be able to project. So it is projecting, but you see how this one popped up here and it wasn't there before. What it does is if I click on it, it gives me a laser pointer isn't that awesome I think that this is the coolest thing ever and I was just so beyond excited so whenever I just need to point to something I just use oh there's my bit Lee's if you guys are curious doesn't it look like me sorry um, but I just point using my laser pointer I think it is so cool so uh, yesterday We've been talking about multiples of 10. Uh, we did some practice here together, which I had some problems up here. We did uh, with finding the values of different expressions. And then I had them go out and complete some practice um, on their own with their partners. And I like it because, I mean, it just kind of flips. And then I can zoom in for the kids, which is really nice. Some of them need me to zoom in quite a bit. So yeah, they, they love, there's my bitlies again. There's my digital planner. Where's my place value? Did I delete it? I think I deleted it. But yeah, that's it. That's kind of what I wanted to show you guys so that you can see how I end up taking my uh, anchor charts. What's really nice is that when I'm done, I am going to upload all of these as images onto our Schoology. So I'm creating almost like a, uh, a daily page where I write down kind of the gist of what we're doing in that unit for that day. And then I put along any notes or any anchor charts. So a lot of what you're seeing here is going up into Schoology. I haven't done it to yet. I have to do it today though. So as parents go in or kids need to kind of go back and check and review for themselves, they can go back and look at my notes and then they can also look at the anchor charts themselves um, and see, oh yeah, that's kind of what she was talking about or what we ended up doing. So I like it. I think it's a really nice and easy way. I don't have to deal with a ton of paper. I don't have to deal with markers. I've just gone totally digital, y'all. I'm living the digital life. That's all I gotta say. I'm also living the I don't want to wear shoes life <laughs> at the moment. Do you guys think that's gross? Do you walk around, do you refuse to walk around your classroom without shoes? 
what kind of teacher are you? Are you the teacher that walks around without shoes? Or are you the teacher that's like, mm -mm, no, no, that's gross. I seriously gotta get myself focused. I'm focused. It's the end of the day uh, and we had, oh my gosh, I look awful. I feel awful, y'all. Like my head is like radiating heat right now. I don't know if I actually have a feel fever. I don't know if you guys have ever like had that where you just like, you feel crummy so you, like you feel like you're radiating heat. That's what I got going on. Um, but we had induction this afternoon so I was able to get with my mentee um, a little bit after we had her induction meeting and with inductions what they do is we have meetings in um, like once or twice a month I think and we sit down with our mentees we go through the process of what kind of I went through with my very first year here at this district um, and then I just kind of sat in her room and we just talked about some areas that she would like to grow in uh, I think I'm gonna go and observe her and really and truly I just kind of I want to help her but I also at the same time don't want to think that she can't try out her own ideas and she can't like um, do things that she wants to try out for herself because if I'm constantly giving her all the right answers she's not kind of learning for herself if that makes sense so I want her to explore with ideas. I want her to try things out. Um, I want her to learn from her mistakes and then truly learn how to start reflecting as a teacher. And so that's kind of the discussion that we ended up having. So today was a really good day. Uh, the kids had, uh, we had math this afternoon. We continued working on like my three different groups that I have at this point in math. Uh, and we had writing so we're doing Saturdays and Tea Cakes which was a book that I did last year. Um, it's a great, great text to use for mentor text because it goes into some repeating sentences using pronouns and really looking and making those observations so the kids today with Saturdays and tea cakes they were able to come up with five different ideas for stories and we talked to them because in this story this boy he does something every Saturday every Saturday he goes and uh, rides his bike to his mama's and then every Saturday he makes tea cakes with his mama and so <clears throat> it was almost as if he's kind of remembering this moment that he had with his grandmother. So I talk and I kind of shared some moments that I had. Um, so like every Sunday we would have like family breakfast when I was little at my grandmother's house. You know, every Christmas right now, I go to Alabama and spend time with my mom and my side of the family. Um, every Thanksgiving we have like very certain like things that we end up doing. Um, Every, I don't know, every spring um, we go out and we buy flowers together or new plants for the house. So it can be something truly small and we want our kids to understand that stories don't have to truly be some really big extravagant moment where it doesn't have to be like that you had this accident and you broke your bones and you know, oh that the you know i go and see mickey <laughs> at disney world like it doesn't have to be something extravagant it can be something very small and what's so great is about this author is that it's truly like one of those touching moments um and that's kind of what we wanted to emphasize with our kids today tomorrow's friday <laughs> i'm very grateful for friday <laughs> to be here and uh, I am ready to go home, to be honest. I don't feel good. I think I'm just gonna go and get in bed. So that's what I'm doing. I look awful and I do apologize about that. So today is Friday and I am kind of borderline okay today. <laughs> um, but I seriously didn't want to get dressed. So I refused to wear pants today and I tried to figure out another way to repurpose like a long dress. And here's what I came up with today. Uh, so this dress that you see down here, it's not a skirt. It is legit a dress. Um, I got this a few years ago for my mom from J. Crew, and it's kind of nice because it's very like flowy. Um, I don't so much like the top of this dress because it almost makes it look like I'm wearing a nightgown. <laughs> I don't know it's it's kind of odd but I love the material of it it's so super light and it's very flowy which I do really like about it so I try to put things over it either with like a button shirt um, today I went super cash and I decided to just do it with a green t-shirt it's a short sleeve green t-shirt from Target uh, I think I got this last fall maybe um, so I've had it for a while 
and then the cardigan itself is a little bit thicker than what I wanted to wear but honestly I couldn't find my thin cardigan um, so this one is from Old Navy I really like it I got it last year I like how it has like the woven look here I love the buttons of it I think it's such a great length but like I said it's a little bit thicker than what I wanted to wear thankfully Today is a day where it's going to rain a lot and it's about to get way cooler here where I live. So I am so like so grateful for it. I think it doesn't even break 80 degrees today, which is really nice. Um, and then I have, <laughs> you guys are going to make fun of me. Um, I have these like really rank old shoes. <laughs> like look how old they are. Like, they're falling apart. <laughs> but these are, like, my lucky brand. I love them because they're just, like, slip-ons. Um, I've had them for, like, years. Uh, and I don't refuse to get rid of them because, I don't know, I like the look of them. They're super easy and just casual for me to be able to wear with the dress. So this is really it that's that's my outfit of the day <laughs> I have to also say that my husband made a comment about how good my hair looked um, I decided to do something a little bit different with my hair um, normally I go for like an uber messy like curly look today I actually brushed my hair after I curl it I always brush my hair but I brushed it after I had curled it so it kind of made it very soft if that makes sense. I like it. I think it looks nice. Um, same jewelry as always, guys. <laughs> I just I wear the same thing over and over again. Um, but yep, that's my outfit for today on Friday. So today's going to be a little bit of an easier day for us because uh, we have SRI that we have to uh, give out to our kids. Um, so the SRI was the Scholastic Reading Inventory. Uh, fun fact, Scholastic no longer owns the reading inventory, so it's just called RI. <laughs> but we still refer to it as the SRI. Um, so we have to give our SRI, and the way that my school does it is that uh, this first week was supposed to be open for sixth graders, the next week for fifth graders, the next week for fourth graders. The problem with that when it comes to the MAC team, because we are grades four, five, and six, is that it screws up a day every single day for the next three weeks for us. So we very kindly went to our reading specialist and was like, hey, is there any way that we could just go ahead and give it to all of our fourth, fifth, and sixth graders on one day? And she gave us the thumbs up. So that is what we are doing today. Um, I know that we said that we were going to do the, uh, um, like the, the, the murder crime scene, or it's like a murder mystery. I call it a murder mystery, but it wasn't even going to be a murder. So I don't know why I kept calling it a murder mystery. Um, I know I said we were going to do the murder mystery today. However, I just was not feeling good. And every single day that I would go home, I would straight up go to bed. I never even did any work. So, uh, we couldn't do the murder mystery. Um, and then we said, well, what if we did it on Monday? And I said, well, you know, I might be able to get to it. I don't know how I'm going to feel this weekend, to be honest. I'm going to go see Gabriel Iglesias. The fair opens up on set and set on actually today. The fair is open today. Um, but we're going to go to the fair on Saturday. Uh, I'm going to go see Gabriel Iglesias with the fluffy, um, with Ian on Saturday. Today I have a dinner date with a good friend of mine. Um, Janine from Bucation. If you like haven't seen her in the vlog, she's been in my vlogs. She we went to New York together, so I have that vlog there too. Um, but I'm gonna go to dinner with her because I was gonna take her out for her birthday, but then she got sick and we've I feel like we've rescheduled so many times. Um so it was just a really like jam-packed weekend for me and I didn't know how much I was gonna be able to get done. So we came up with another idea yesterday and we said, what if um, because we do we have to get to our DRAs very very soon this month what if we just do a quick like inference lesson like we said we were gonna do with our like normal like our booklet um, and uh, during the time that we have our um, our DRAs that we're doing, we always do a rotation day because it just makes it so much easier for us to be able to do our, um, our, our, our DRAs because then that way, like, 
we split the two into two big groups um, and then one of us can do running records the other two are working with kids and then we switch so another teacher has you know about 40 minutes or so to be able to get all the running records done it just like it goes by so quick y'all and it's so nice that we do it that way um, I feel like those are my girls that are texting and that's like my phone's just dinging constantly so um, we are gonna do the uh, crime scene mystery during our rotations so that gives us a good like week almost two weeks I think to be able to get it planned out which is so much nicer instead of me having to like us feeling like we have to rush to get it done so today we're gonna give the SRI during reading um, we're gonna talk about for morning meeting how we have stakeholders and how uh, when we are not responsible in a certain area how it uh, impacts some of the stakeholders around us so for instance um, if you are playing baseball and you don't end up practicing, uh, who are the people that are gonna be, or you're late to your game, who are the people that are impacted by um, you being un in unresponsible, in unresponsible, <laughs> irresponsible, I don't know why I was saying un, y'all I teach. Um, so, who, irresponsible, um, and that's kind of the discussion that we're gonna have this morning. It's not so much activities, which I know the kids were probably a little bummed about, but we had to get our lessons in for pride. So today was, re this week was responsibility, to next week is going to be involved, which would be a little bit nice. Um, and uh, let's see, after lunch for writing, we're gonna continue talking with brainstorming. The kids were able to brainstorm with Saturdays and tea cakes, which was nice. Now they're going to see how we take a story and uh, we uh, place it in, we start organizing uh, the events in a story. And what's really nice is the way that I teach this is that we'll discuss the story and we'll talk about how an author started this exact same way. And we'll almost go in reverse um, and we will take the story and we will kind of show how the author was able to plot it out and brainstorm it overall. Um, when I create the anchor chart at the end of the day, I'll show it to you guys so that you can see kind of what it ends up looking like. But we go in reverse with the actual story that we read for our mentor text and then the kids have an opportunity. It's probably going to take a good day or two for them to uh, brainstorm their own story so they're gonna pick from one of the five events that they came up with yesterday and they're gonna brainstorm their stories for today and then they'll also have time Monday to do it in math it's gonna be typical math stuff um, we have our IXL list that we're they're still working on they have some group activities that they're doing um, and then I'm just doing math groups I have a division group I have a and the division group is like reviewing so that they can get into fractions. Um, I have a multiplication group going and then I have a place value group going as well. So all's good there and nothing like crazy fancy. And I feel like we were doing something for, ah, testing fourth grade for word study because we're starting word study next week. Um, we were getting a little ahead of ourselves when we said that we wanted to do passion projects like ASAP. We don't want to do passion projects ASAP because we have to still teach them how to do our word study. Um, so next week we're going to spend the Mac hour going over word study and giving them some of that instruction. What's great about the Mac hour is we can make it anything that we want. <laughs> so uh, that's pretty much how our day is going to go today. Pretty low key, pretty easy. I'm going to be zooming out pretty much right after, um, right after I'm able to get done teaching because I'm meeting Janine at five o'clock, so that'll be nice. Then we're gonna go out. I need to go find chart paper for my sweet girl because I totally forgot to get her some chart paper. So I'm gonna go find her some chart paper, put it inside of her classroom. Um, I'm also gonna go, I think, during my special and observe her classroom this afternoon, um, just so that I can kind of give her some of my feedback. Uh, and then one day she'll end up coming in and observing me so that she can kind of see uh, how I do it in my room. I don't know how great it is, but I do stuff. <laughs>